Hello everyone. Thank you for joining me again. I'm just folding some kitchen towels here. I wanted to thank you for watching our most recent upload. I really enjoyed reading your comments there. Thank you so much for that. It's the first week in October. The autumn leaves are falling and soon the ground will be covered with snow. Can you believe it? To combat winter's dreariness, today we are going to create an elegant but inexpensive window garden. I think the window will sing a spring song all winter long. And of course I need to prepare tonight's dinner. Since we have lots of root veggies on hand, some of them from the garden here, I think a root veggie pizza is in order. And finally, I want to introduce you to the newest member of our household. But before we do anything, I need to prepare the vegetables for our pizza topping. And for our topping, I'm going to use one medium-sized potato. This is one of the potatoes that you and I harvested last week. I am cutting the potato into thin slices that will go on an oiled tray. Peel a large carrot and cut it into thin sticks, about one and a half inches in length. Add the carrot to the baking tray. Peel and thinly slice a medium-sized turnip and add it to the tray. Parsnips contribute their sweetness to this pizza. I am slicing two of them and adding them to the tray. Then chop a medium-sized onion and add it to the other vegetables on the tray. I'm also going to add some garlic, but that will come later. Now another little glug of olive oil salt, pepper, toss. I'm going to put this into the refrigerator until it's closer to dinner time. Meanwhile, let's head upstairs and work on the window garden. So this is the east facing window in my upstairs bath. Let me show you how I outfitted the window for the content containment of plants. Almost any window can become a garden. I equipped mine with a broad sill and glass shelves. Staples and wire at the top of the window are for vining plants. So to outfit this window garden, what I did was put this cabinet in front of the window sill. My window sill is only about six inches wide. The cabinet is 12 inches, so it gives me a large, broad space for plants. This cabinet is made of pine, and of course, when I painted it, almost immediately, the little knots in the pine showed through the paint. So let me show you a quick cure for knots in pine. I found this spray-on primer at my local hardware store. The primer contains shellac. Shellac permanently seals the resin in pine knots so that the wood can be painted. Of course, this whole entire cabinet could stand to be repainted, but we're not doing that today. I want to talk to you about the glass shelves here. These glass shelves are held in place by simple shelf supports that I bought at the hardware store. You can find shelf supports of all kinds in just about any big box hardware store. As for the glass shelves themselves, I bought these from a glass cutting outfit and to save a ton of money, I asked them to use salvage glass. So they cut the shelves from salvage glass. I saved a lot of money. 
these shells were not at all expensive. I think they were maybe $15 or $20 each, and I have three of them. And the shelves could use a good cleaning, so I'm going to do that right now. These shelves are really easy to clean, either with plain water or with a glass cleaner. My shelves are between one fourth and one half inch thick. They are very durable. I installed a pair of old kerosene lamp holders on either side of the window. These holders are just great for holding potted plants. And I bought the holders on eBay for a song. Kerosene lamp holders were mass produced in the late 19th and early 20th centuries. You can find them at antique shops, junk shops, and on eBay. I'm going to remove this philodendron from this kerosene lamp holder because I need to perform a little surgery on the plant and also I want to put a different potted plant up here. I have a no plastic policy for this window garden. So although a lot of my plants are in plastic pots, I hide them in chardonnays. These chrysanthemums were 50% off at my local nursery. I bought several as they can later be planted in the outdoor garden. Now I am adding a common green ivy to the sill between the chrysanthemums. I am placing a trio of African violets on the first shelf. African violets are among my favorite flowering plants. For the lamp holders, I selected purple asters. These, too, were 50% off at the local nursery. Another African violet goes on the middle shelf. It will receive two green companions in just a moment. Well, this is a good start, but I still have a few more plants to add. And as mentioned, I need to perform surgery on Mr. Philodendron here. So let's head back downstairs for a moment. So something else I want for the broad window sill in that window garden is tropical bulbs. So I have these paper whites and the variety is called in ball. It's not very fragrant, but it's very beautiful. And you can plant the bulbs in either soil or pebbles and water. You could even use marbles and water. So I'm using aquarium gravel here. Let's see how these bulbs will sit. Just perfect. Now, you only want the water to tickle the base of the bulbs. So what I'd like to do is add the water now so I know what the level is. There we are. And then arrange the bulbs. Mercifully, tropical bulbs do not require a cold period in order to bloom. And remember, you always plant with the pointed tip up. Then add more pebbles just to anchor the bulbs. The bulbs need not be completely buried. So we will bring this up to the window garden in a moment. We have to perform surgery on Mr. Phil. So I am going to turn this one philodendron into a pair of philodendron. 
and I have my pots here. I like to cover the drainage hole with window screen. I obtain window screen for free by simply going to my local hardware store and asking them if they have any leftover window screen. They always do. Now we have to knock this monster out of its pot. That was easy. And we're going to take a knife and putting on my surgeon's gloves just in case there's any blood. Okay, I think I found just the point to separate. I missed the point, but that's okay. Philodendrons can be very uncooperative. If you've ever grown philodendron, you know that it grows very rapidly in even the worst conditions, and it roots readily in either soil or just plain water. Now you want the plant to sit well enough below the rim of the pot so that you have a basin for water. This is all going to work out no matter how unpromising this all looks right now. I'm simply going to root this lawn cutting. I've done this before and I know it works. I have removed the lower leaves and from those points roots will emerge. Let me water these and then we'll head back up to the window garden. I am weaving the philodendron stems through wire that is held in place with staples. The stems will create a living green valance for the window. Final flourish, I have taken some of the philodendron cuttings and I've set them in these little coffee cups and they are anchored with pebbles and of course I added water. So these cuttings will root. There. A candle for the top shelf between the two philodendrons. And this, my friends, is the window garden, at least as it will look between now and probably early December. Then I will change it to give it more of a Christmassy look. You can change your window garden to suit the seasons. Of course, now I'm starving. So let's head back downstairs and finish the root veggie pizza. Later that day, I added more plants to the window and played around with their arrangement. And that is the great thing about a window garden. You can move pots around until you achieve the design of your dreams. It's time to roast the root veggies. I have preheated my oven to 450 degrees Fahrenheit or 230 degrees Celsius and I will roast the veggies just until they're perfectly tender and lightly caramelized. That will take from 20 to 30 minutes. While the root veggies are roasting, I'm going to chop up a couple of cloves of garlic. These will be sprinkled over the ricotta cheese that I'm going to spread on the already made pizza crust. Here is my 
already made pizza crust. Now I like already baked crust because, well first I'm lazy and next because when I put this in the oven with its toppings, this crust will become very crisp. And I love a crispy pizza crust. I will top this with about a cup of ricotta cheese. Sprinkle on the garlic. Now I did not put this garlic in with the root veggies because I did not want the garlic to roast and become bitter. So this pizza is going to have a real kick of garlic. I almost forgot that I have a pizza peel. So I'm going to transfer the crust to the peel and then I can slide it directly into the oven after it's topped with the root veggies. I decided to sprinkle some Italian seasoning on this crust. Now we just have to wait for the root veggies to finish. And I have lowered my oven temperature to 425 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 220 degrees Celsius. I am finishing the pizza with shredded Asiago cheese. You might prefer to use Parmesan or mozzarella here. I will slide the pizza directly onto the oven rack. The pizza needs to bake for just 10 minutes. So while we are waiting on the pizza, let me introduce you to the newest member of this household. So this is Goldie. I'm going to tell you his story in a voiceover. Goldie is a male feral kitten that we found on our property. He was malnourished, dehydrated, and extremely weak. Also, his right eye was terribly infected and swollen. After numerous visits to the veterinary clinic, and after much love and care, Goldie is on the road to recovery. If the scratches on my hand are any indication, this kitten certainly loves to play. My dog Avery loves Goldie as much as we do. Our other rescue cat, Binky, was not at all happy about having another kitty in the house. But she is slowly, and certainly reluctantly, accepting Goldie. And unlike Binky, Goldie is highly social. I suspect that you will see him rather frequently in future videos. This looks beautiful. It smells wonderful too. I love this dark wood cutting board. I'd always wanted one. And then my friend Dan Fennell decided to start making cutting boards. He actually created a website. So if you'd like to look at the boards that he's made and maybe order one for yourself, I will put the link to his website in the description below. Let's bring this into the parlor. If you hear any little muse, it's because Goldie is in this room with me. So I cannot wait to dig into this root veggie pizza. And look, you can certainly eat the pizza out of hand. I'm going to use a fork and knife. This is spectacular. I'm moving my wine so you can see my plate. Truly spectacular. Of course, the crust is crispy, but the root veggies, I don't know, they just transform themselves into something magical when they're roasted and then put on top of a pizza crust, 
on a bed of ricotta cheese and chopped garlic. So I hope you will give this pizza a try someday. Thank you so much for spending time with me today while we put together that window garden and we made this root veggie pizza, which please promise me you will try someday. And I'm so glad that you finally got to meet Goldie. If you enjoyed this video, I would really appreciate if you would click the like button. And I can pop a couple of my other videos up here or up here that you can watch between now and my next upload. Until then, please take good care of yourself and I will see you soon. Bye for now.